Like, sorry, just a temporary layoff? Nope. You better place up baby there. Infantry moving up. They say we really peppered that hill. Good shooting, man. Ah, uh, save your medal, Sarge. Where's the coffee that was coming up? I'll jack him up on it again. Mansfield again on three. Any sign of that coffee you promised? Okay, thanks. Sorry I mentioned it. He says it started up a few minutes ago. If everything moved as slow as our coffee, we'd still be back in the States. Or maybe still in Honolulu. One hour to bring coffee 500 yards, don't they? Oh, Bates, cool down so you don't burn the coffee when it gets here. Besides, what's time? You go on someplace? Bates, here, has got time on the brain ever since that last 12-hour pass in New York. He makes a date to meet a gal near the big clock in Grand Central Station. Seven o'clock, he's there prompt, all polished up like an apple. Eight o'clock. No date. Nine o'clock, no date. Ten o'clock, eleven o'clock, twelve o'clock. No date. Thank you. But Bates, he's all eaten up like an apple core, but he's still standing there and hoping and waiting. <laughs> <laughs> we take him back to the barracks. <laughs> Funny, huh? Well, your laughing's pretty hollow. You're as sick as I am about all this business, only you don't shout so loud. Hey, Professor, what time is it? Bates, you might have another date. Five o'clock. What day of the week? Anybody know? It's Saturday, isn't it? That's the professor. He'll know. No, it's Sunday. Easter Sunday morning. Easter's early this year. Trust the professor. Ask him the time, he'll tell you how to make a watch. Ask him the day, he'll throw in a sermon. Ah, oh, who cares whether it's Easter Sunday, Blue Monday, or Dollar Day. Out here, one day's good as the next, meaning they're all bad. Hey, here comes the coffee, I guess. I'm here in a Jeep. Hey, it's the Padre. Well, what do you know about that? Hello, Father. Came by the CP and they had this coffee waiting. It was coming up this way, so I brought it along. Well, it's about time. Good thing you came along, Padre. Faithy here was about to flip a gasket. He's been holding a stopwatch on that coffee for over an hour. At least it's hot. It don't taste no better than the last batch. Bill. What did you say was eating, Batesy? Yeah, the same thing that's eating me is eating all the rest of them. Only they think I don't know it. Look, I'm a spouter and I let it come out so the poison don't get in my innards. Look at this Sarge here. He don't say nothing, but I know how he feels. And Wheeler, look at him when two weeks go by and there's no mail from home. Or Cashman, every second or third day, he's in the dumps, but good. What do you think is eating your baits? That's all so useless. I'm sick of it. I want to get out and live like a decent human being again without my clothes getting stinking and wet. I want to smell some real air instead of gunpowder. Or see a village or a hill that hasn't been torn up by our howitzers. All you fellas feel the same way Bates says you do? How about you, Cashman? Well, sometimes I wish I could gripe like he does. Maybe I'd be better for it, too. I guess I feel it most when I lay down and try to close my eyes and have a minute to think. When that gun's booming, I'm too busy to think. Is there supposed to be a meaning to all this, Padre? Yeah, there's meaning to everything. Sometimes hidden from us, though. Maybe there is a meaning, but I don't see it. All night we've been bombarding Hill number 46. Tomorrow it'll probably be Hill 50. Three days ago it was Hill 39. A month ago it was Hill 22. Why don't you go back farther than that to Hill number one? I don't remember no number one. Maybe some other outfit got that. That's not what I mean. There was a hill number one, and it was taken by one man, alone. Alone? Yes, alone. You mean Sergeant York, Padre. He didn't take a hill, only prisoners. Oh, wait a minute. What was that Marine on Guadalcanal? What was his name? He got killed later, I know. They called him a one-man army and pinned the Congressional Medal of Honor on him. Sergeant Johnny Bassaloni, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Professor ought to be on a quiz show. Might win himself an electric washing machine. 
<laughs> no, it wasn't Johnny Bassaloni, God rest him. It was a friend of his. Best friend Johnny Bassaloni ever had. Yeah? And the hill he took was Calvary. You ever looking for the meaning of anything? The very meaning of meaning. Here's your reference point. You've got to go back to Calvary. Because if you don't, well, you're right, Batesy. Fighting like this has no meaning. It's a mess, and so is everything else. How does that figure here? Of course, you know today's Easter, don't you? We didn't until the professor told us. And the cook didn't send up any Easter eggs. Me in the same old hat. I look like a bunny. <laughs> now, Easter's a lot more than eggs. And more than bunnies and Fifth Avenue parades. Well, it looks like it's going to be quiet for a while. All you fellows are trying to puzzle things out for yourselves. Let's go back to hill number one. Let's pick it up at its darkest hour, right after the crucifixion, when Joseph of Arimathea is begging Pilate for the body of Jesus. Now, Pontius Pilate, as you know, was the Roman military governor of Judea. And here in Jerusalem... Then this Nazarene is already dead? I have had no such report. Yes, worthy procurator. He was the first of the three to die. Did you not feel the earthquake? Of course. Who could not feel such a severe earthquake? It shook my very throne. But what did that have to do with his death? It was as if his last sigh were taken up by the earth and fell to its very depths. Superstition. Coincidence. Earthquakes are common here. I don't want to discuss such a subject further. You come here asking for the body of this um, criminal. What do you say, Flaccus? I am against it. The high priests will be displeased. They fear the disciples of this crucified one will steal the body. And giving it to Joseph of Arimathea here is almost inviting the theft, isn't it? I don't say he is not without honor and respect among the Judeans. He is a counselor. But he has shown us where his sympathies lie. Exactly. Where is the body of this Nazarene to be buried? To be thrown in the common grave with the others. Hmm. Why do you involve yourself in this? You have wealth, position, influence. While he lived, you were not known as his disciple. Now that he's dead, why not let things take their normal course? Because I am convinced they will not take a normal course. Never did man speak as this man spoke. He promised... Yes, he promised. Must I remind you again that he is now a corpse and you are here begging for his body, the body of a criminal? Let's have an end to this nonsense. Why do you now call him criminal when it was you who said you found no cause in him? Of what do you now accuse him? Oh, make no mistake, it was not I who accused him. I, I was but judge. I had no personal feelings against this Jesus. He seemed gentle and harmless enough. Had the misfortune to be the procurator. But all that is finished now. Permit me, worthy pilot. I am too old a man to want to gain anything for myself by deceit. I do not call myself a great scholar. But of one thing I am sure. The wine of history is born out of the ferment in men's hearts. To have seen such ferment, you should have been on Golgotha this afternoon, or come through the streets as I did this very hour. Your palace walls closed out, much you should have seen. Is it true, Flaccus? Are the people as much disturbed as he says? I'm afraid he is right, but perhaps it will not last. Latest reports are that the streets are now almost deserted. Never have I known it so quiet. Isn't that because of this Paschal season, as they call it? Oh, I wish I could so report. But I'm told the people are in wonderment and terror. The people? There's no pleasing them. One moment they're acclaiming this Nazarene a king. The next they're yelling for his crucifixion. Such a noise, it's still ringing in my ears. Yet so much seems to have happened this day that it's hard to believe it was only this morning. Oh, if I had a stronger garrison, I wouldn't have bent to them. But then you would probably have had a tax revolt on your hands. What if Herod had reported these things to Tiberius Caesar? I know, I know. Let's get to the business at hand. Flaccus, do you still oppose giving the body to this Joseph of Arimathea? I do. Don't forget this Nazarene boasted he would rise again on the third day. What's to prevent his followers from stealing the body and claiming he did rise? I am afraid I will have to deny your request. 
If you throw the body in the common grave, aren't you inviting its theft? I am willing to put the body of Jesus in the sepulcher I have prepared for myself. It is in my own garden, not far from Golgotha. It is hewn out of solid rock and has but one entrance. It would be impossible for anyone to steal a body from such a vault. Caiaphas and Annas will not be happy about such an arrangement. Caiaphas and Annas! But for them, this problem would not have arisen. They've spoiled my day. Let them worry a bit. Joseph of Arimathea, your persistence is won. Scribe, make out an order permitting this man to take down the body of the Nazarene and give it burial, as he described. Hmm. I thought this Jesus had friends only among the poor. I must proceed more cautiously. I'm going to enjoy the faces of the Pharisees when I tell them my decision. I wonder why no word from Claudia. Well, Cassius will know. Uh, send out word that I must see Cassius as soon as he arrives. unsettled state. I think he fears that putting Jesus to death was a mistake. You were just in time. There was Cephas in this group now. We work to do. First we'll get the oils and spices for the anointing. Then we'll get ladders and sheets to take the body down. We're the only ones to do it. What happened to all those others who followed the crucified one? Most of them are in hiding. All except the one they call John. I would have thought he'd be the most timid. I admire the way he stood his ground. I don't know what the women would have done without him. Come. I think this is the home of Mara, the Spice Woman. I'm sure of it. Careful what you say. Her trade is gossip as much as spices. Yes, yes, I'm coming. Who, who is it? We've come to buy spices and herbs. Who, who is it? Joseph of Arimathea. This is Nicodemus. We don't mean to frighten you. We're sorry to call on you like this. Had we known our needs, we'd have come to the marketplace this afternoon. It would have done you no good. This afternoon, I was up at the hill with all the others. The marketplace was deserted. Heavens knows I need the money, but there was no business. Were, were you at the hill? Did you see? Yes, we were there. Is, is he dead? Did you not wait? Oh, I wanted to see everything, but the soldiers kept shoving us back. I knew one of them, and he let me get close. When I saw them driving those nails, all oh, those terrible nails. <laughs> Do they have to use nails? <laughs> I have to go home. <laughs> Woman, we've a night's work before us. Do you have spices and embalming unction as they say you have? Yes, all you need. Is it for Jesus you wish it? Yes. He's, he's dead then. Was it at the time of the earthquake? It was then. Oh, I, I thought it must be. Strange. Strange. I'll get you the spices and herbs. Come in. Come in. <laughs> I may need him again later. Cassius! Cassius, the 
curator has been asking for you every two or three minutes. Where have you been? I've just come from Golgotha. I must see him at once. Oh, now, Cassius, be careful what you say to the procurator. He's had a bad day. Besides, his wife hasn't returned yet. Have you seen her? Claudia, where did she go? We don't know. Surely she wasn't at the hill. No, she wasn't. But I must see him. Oh, now, don't say anything to disturb him. He trusts you, Cassius. If you have bad news, save it for tomorrow. Caiaphas and Annas have just left, and I warn you, Pilate is irritated. You've never seen him so angry. Wait till he hears what I have to tell him. What are you going to tell him? Come and hear for yourself. Come in, Cassius! Forget the formalities for the moment. Where have you been? Why have you kept me waiting for your report? Your instructions, worthy procurator, were to bring you the full report. Out with it, then. Worthy procurator. Yes, yes. This Jesus we crucified was the Son of God. You infernal idiot, how dare you? Surely, Cassius is mistaken. With your permission, I will continue with my report. I want facts, not slobberly opinions. I'm a soldier, worthy procurator. What's more, a soldier over soldiers. I serve you best when I bring you all the facts. I will proceed. I have seen men die before. I put them to death myself on the battlefield many times. They were enemies, but they bore an honest sword. And I have carried out the penalty of death here in Jerusalem before. But I have never seen a man die as this man. Why do you talk this way? I have seen men die with hate in their eyes, uncertainty, wonderment, fear. But never before have I seen a man die loving those who put him to death. Is not this the look that comes into the eyes of a dog when you beat him into submission? How little you seem to understand my words. This Jesus was not a weak man. Gentle, yes, but not weak. Yes, he was strong. I remember when he stood before me. And I reminded him that I had the power to crucify him or release him. He told me that I would have no power at all over him were it not given me from above. For a moment, from the quiet strength of him, I could believe him a king. This man died loving us. I don't know exactly how to tell you this. Many times I'd seen this Jesus blessing the throngs whenever he preached to them with his arms upraised. On the cross, all I could think of as I watched was that he was blessing us still. Come, come, Cassius, you're dealing in sentiments. I want facts. How did he die? And when? You will recall that I visited you when Jesus had been on the cross some time. Told you there would be no need to break his legs. Well, go on. When I returned, Jesus was almost dead. At the instant of his death, there was a great earthquake. Surely you felt it. Hmm. It's true, then. The same instant, you say? The very instant. The archers came up, took his legs, to make certain he was dead before the Sabbath. I had ridden up to the middle cross. To show them that Jesus was already dead, I... You what? I drove my lance. This lance into his side and... And what? Have you not noticed? Nor you, Flaccus? Noticed what? Finish your story. Look at my eyes. Yes, you... You used to squint. Your eyelids trembled nervously. I, what are you trying to tell us? Yes, what is this? From childhood, I suffered this defect, this disfigurement. This afternoon, it left me. This afternoon? When this afternoon? When? As I withdrew my lance, blood and water from his side flowed over my face and body. At that instant, my eyes were cured. But you said this Jesus was already dead. He was. But more than my eyes were cured, I felt a new excitement in my heart. At this instant, I knew he was the Son of God. I came down and knelt among the women and adored him. But you're a Roman. What about the household gods? There's only one God, and this is he. Ridiculous. You must have made yourself ridiculous. Didn't the other soldiers laugh? I saw laughter on nearly everyone's face early this afternoon. But in the darkness of the earthquake, no one laughed. If I know my soldiers, there were some who laughed. You must have been ridiculous at the foot of that cross, like a silly woman. 
I swear to you that there were curses and shouts, sobs and tears and trembling. But there was no laughter. What were the other soldiers doing at these moments you describe? Abenadar, the centurion I put in charge, what was he doing? He was beside me in the mud on his knees. I heard him cry out, truly this man was the son of God. Once I washed my hands of this matter, I thought it finished, but... I'm twice the fool because Claudio warned me that I should have nothing to do with this just man. If I hadn't done as I did, I might have had worse trouble. Insurrection, perhaps, sir. Have you seen Claudia Cassius? No, Procurator, I have not. She's not in her chamber. She hasn't been seen for many hours. The servants don't know where she is. If you see her, let me know at once. At once. And one more mission. The Pharisees are displeased that I permitted the body to fall into the hands of Joseph of Arimathea. As fantastic as your story is of this afternoon's events, I, I can think of no other person that I can trust with this new commission. You will take charge of the soldiers at the grave. Flaccus will give you a written order of command. Yes, worthy procurator. You are to be my personal representative. I will hold you responsible. You will report to me everything that happens and keep your wits about you and don't come back here with another idle tale of nonsense. Have the soldiers been assigned? Yes, they have preceded. You will relieve Gallicus in command. Stay a moment, Flaccus. Yes, worthy procurator. What do you make of the tale Cassius tells? Fantastic. But many fantastic things must have happened to have sobered the people this way. The people, the people, forget the people. They're like reeds blowing in the wind this way and that. True, but Cassius' eyes, certainly enough, are cured. Miracles from a dead man. These things will bear watching. Yes. I fear our troubles are not yet ended. I am to be called for every report from my officers. Do you hear? We've still work to do. You've stared at that sight long enough, as if transfixed. Yes, but it burns itself into my very senses. It seems to remind me of Abram's altar when he offered up his son, Isaac. Perhaps it is meant to be a sign such as that. But Nicodemus, our task is with the living. I fear for Mary, his mother. Every one, for what purpose, I do not know. All signs of defeat. She seems not to see the utter defeat in all that's happened. I've noticed that. Sorrow, yes, I've never seen such sorrow. But defeat, not a sign of defeat. And that she was like the son himself. He seemed to turn death into victory. On the cross, he seemed not to pity himself, but us. Did you hear him say, Father, forgive them? They know not what they do. Yes, my heart was wrenched when I heard him. And again, a short time ago, when she held his body in her lap, as if she would never part with it. She held his arms outstretched as if she were a living cross herself. Here she comes. thorns that were lodged in his brow. I'll put them with the others. Nothing must be lost. Good woman, must you torment yourself with these memories, these instruments, these thorns? Were it not better to forget them all? Surely they are but signs of cruelty, of hate. Oh, no, Nicodemus. These thorns were his crown. We must keep them because they were his. But Mary... Do you remember when he fed the multitudes by the sea, multiplying the loaves and fishes? Yes, I was there, and I. And John here was among them. Yes, I was there. 
and later on gathered the fragments left by the 5,000. Yes, there was a great throng, and they wanted to take him by force and crown him king, but he always knew he was the king of sorrows, and he preferred this crown and accepted it out of love. But it was given in hate. But taken in love. Love will always conquer hatred. Love is strength, hatred is weakness. Is that not what he always taught? Yes, that is true. He did teach us that. The soldiers return. That means trouble again. Wait, I will see. Jesper! Who is the leader here? You may address me as Gallicus. Temporary command till Cassius arrives. Why do your soldiers drive us away? I have permission here from the procurator. From Pilate, we are about our business. And we... What are you to do? We must seal the tomb and guard it. But we have not finished the anointing. Must this be done at once? Immediately. This minute. I will attend to the seal once I have satisfied myself that the body of the crucified one is within. I assure you that it is. I shall see for myself. Close the tomb and seal it. Aren't you Mary, the one they call the Magdalene? I am Mary of Magdala, yes. I am honored to place you under the protection of the Roman legions. I am Gallicus, second cohort. My men and I... I need no protection from Romans. An uncivil tongue in so fair a woman. Have you not heard that we have conquered the world? Would you rebuke the mighty Caesar as your king? My king lies there. <laughs> your king? Nothing but a carpenter's son. He's dead. Bury not your heart in graves, fair one. He will rise again as he has promised. <laughs> <laughs> so he will rise again. <laughs> well, Pilate has other ideas. We will camp here and see that he doesn't. And then, woman of Magdala. <laughs> Must the Romans make sport of the helpless? Back, you Judean dogs, before my sword divides each of you like a cloven apple. Leave us be. Must you annoy us? Oh, Have Such valor would make Caesar proud of you, Gallicus. I was only about... Obvious, you were outnumbered by helpless women and old men. My apologies for the rudeness of my men. They will not trouble you again, I assure you. Thank you, Roman. You have paid us a kind He is a kind Roman. Oh, yeah. He is a kind man. He will help us. Help us. The procurator has posted a watch at this tomb. I must carry out his orders. But I assure you, no harm will come to the body during the term of my watch. That is very kind, Roman. Oh, you help us. Thank you, Lance. Your words and manner are those of kindness. In the darkness, you perhaps do not recognize my face. I saw him at the foot of the cross on his knees. Yes, he was there. I saw him. Good woman, I was the soldier who drove a lance through the side of your son. Yes. Yes, he was. He was already dead, but it seemed a heaven-sent impulse to do as I did. Suddenly, I felt the need of preventing further desecration of his body. I had to show the archers he was truly dead, so his legs would not be broken. Have no fear, God reads hearts. You fulfilled a prophecy. Not a bone of him shall you break. But I drove a lance through his heart. And through mine, you opened his heart, and he wonderfully opened yours. He has opened my heart, as he opened my eyes. Quiet of the watch, Albert. Come warm yourself. So I will. Cassius is communing with himself. I wish you were in a better mood. I'd like to ask him some questions. What, for example? About Claudia, of course. Claudia Procles, the procurator's wife? What about her? Before coming on watch, I met Quinticus. He has one of the palace assignments. You notice the way he's put on weight since he's had access to the palace kitchens? Get Quinticus? What about Claudia? Well, Quinticus says the palace gossip is that Claudia's missing. Pilot's in a frenzy. You know what a temper he has. Claudia missing? That's strange. 
Seems that Pilot and Claudia had some disagreement about this Nazarene. She told him to have nothing to do with him at the trial. He promised her he wouldn't and broke his pledge. She's gone. What makes you think Cassius can tell us? Well, he could if anyone could. He's one of Pilot's inner circle, isn't he? I wonder if that's what he's pondering now. I don't think he's worrying about Claudia. Looks like he's involved in deeper mysteries. Joseph of Arimathea. But for your kindness, I know not where we'd have found refuge amid such trouble. It is wise for you to remain here in my supper room. Your appearance on the streets now would only cause commotion and could bring you harm. Stay here as long as you wish. Thank you, Joseph. We must take counsel together to decide what is the wisest course. Are we all here? Yes, Paul. Matthew. Let them in, Stephen. Matthew. 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 And Tom. Hail, Peter. Hail, Matthew. Hail, Thomas. Peter. I think we're all here now. We are? We are gathered here by agreement to keep the eve of the Sabbath. But first, I want to address you. Peter. Yes, Thomas? Is it wise to meet here in our custom place? I think not. Will not Judas betray us, too, as he did the master? He knew we were to meet the Sabbath Eve. Have you not heard, Thomas? No, I have not. Betray the master with a kiss. That traitor. Judas was twice a traitor. First to the master and then to himself. He hanged himself. I don't believe it. Judas was too crafty. Besides, he has our common purse. It's probably some trick. Thief, do not always doubt, Thomas. I have seen his wretched body, and so I believe have several of the others. I have seen it. Yes, Judas is dead, Thomas. That such perfidy could come from our very ranks shakes me to my heart's core. It shows how weak we all are without the master. Not one of us is without blame, save John here, who would have followed the master's very footsteps. And I praise him, although he seeks no praise. I am not worthy to be your leader. And why such a one, weak as I was appointed, I have never ceased to wonder. Perhaps Jesus is teaching us still that we are weak, that we may be strong, like the seed growing secretly of which the Master spoke. Yesterday's events I watched from afar, having already denied the Lord. But John was strong, as was Mary, his mother. And from them I borrow strength that is not my own. We must counsel together what to do. Peter. Yes, my brother Andrew. Before we followed the master, we were fishermen. In three years, we have not lost our skill. We're like rusty anchors, perhaps. Too long out of water and too much in the sun, but easily fitted again for service. I suggest we leave these precincts and go back to Galilee, where we belong. Good suggestion, Andrew. Well spoken, Andrew. Now that's wisdom. Surely we did not spend three years following the master to return again to our nets. Was it for this the Master sent us out to cure the sick, cast out devils? Must I remind you, John, that the Master is dead, with Roman soldiers pacing at his grave? And from what I hear, a monstrous rock sealing it. Aye, the Master is dead. What are we to do? I speak only for myself. But I long for the hard pull of oars again in my hand and the sound of wind snapping in the sails. I was cut out to be a fisherman. For that, I have the arms. I don't have the language for anything else. I used to admire the way the master held the throng spellbound with his words, as if he spoke to every heart. There's not one of us here who could do that. Yes, it's true. We're fishermen. Unlike most of you, I was not a fisherman, but a publican, a tax collector. I was Levi then, but when our Lord said, follow me, I was named Matthew. In this group, I do not hold the purse. So by training, I might have done so. I still have that training. I still can make an accounting, write a bond, or strike a balance. I ask you now to strike this balance. Christ is lost to us, but his Holy Mother is still here among us. A veritable apostle, an apostle of apostles. Do we not remember the Master's parable of the talents? 
Are we too like the slothful servant? Oh, no. While Christ himself is put away into the earth, let us avail ourselves of his gifts. Let us make place here, among us, for Mary, his holy mother. Well, sir, it is true wisdom. Wisdom indeed. Matthew is wise to have said this. How have we overlooked this? God has favored your tongue with wisdom, Matthew. How blind our hearts, how blind our eyes. Our words, our disputings, make more sorrowful the very mother of sorrows. Let us give her rightful place here among us to counsel us. We are like little children, holy mother of the crucified, wanting to run and not knowing the direction, wanting to hide and not knowing covert. Your words shall counsel us in these dark hours. Jesus taught us to pray, telling us our Father knows our needs before we ever ask. It is true. He does indeed. It is so. We need only but to ask him. Let us ask his help. Will you lead us, Holy Mother, in some familiar prayer from the temple that we all know? Let us pray for strength. Strength for ourselves and to forgive our enemies. Jesus taught us a new prayer. Forgive our enemies, why every hand is set against us. Dare we venture into the streets, the soldiers or the Pharisees might seize us. How can we forgive yesterday's crime? Forgive Judas and Pilate and Caiaphas. And my betrayal. Forgive Golgotha, the whips, the thorns, the scourges. Jesus, who bore them, Andrew, Thomas, Peter, all of you, he forgave everyone. From his own lips I heard him say, Father, forgive them, they know not what they do. He taught us this same prayer on the mountainside once. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. I've sent for you, Centurion, to hear from your own lips the details of the search. Flaccus tells me you and your men were not successful in learning of Claudius' whereabouts. True, worthy procurator, but I have patrols still searching even at this late hour. Good. Did you search the temple? Those places there that could be searched without being profaned. You and your men did not penetrate the Holy of Holies. Would anyone dare? There was no need even if it were possible. The veil was torn from top to bottom by the earthquake. The temple was a shambles. Be sure she is not there. Have you searched all the public buildings? We have. The estates of her friends? We have. Is she in hiding? Would anyone dare to hide the procurator's wife? It seems unbelievable. The people are terrified enough. Are you certain she was not on Golgotha? That, that spectacle? The whole city was there, it seems, but I did not see Claudia. Your own conduct, Centurion, I am told, was not above reproach. In what regard? You worship this Nazarene, crying out he was a son of God. I did only as the clods and stones. You what? Worthy procurator, this very week, Jesus rode into Jerusalem on an ass's colt. The people spread their cloaks and branches of palms before him, proclaiming him a king, come in the name of the Lord. The Pharisees asked him to rebuke his disciples for their praise of him. But he told them, I heard him myself. I tell you that if these keep silence, the very stones will cry out. Come, come, is this a parable? <laughs> when Jesus died on Golgotha, the earth quaked and the very stones did cry out. My own heart itself, a stone before, was rent for very need of worshiping him. It was then I cried, truly, this man was the son of God. Who is it? A 
messenger with food. Do you have a sign? Manna in the desert. Yes, those are the words. You are from Lazarus. Coming up. I am Stephen, disciple of Jesus. Even if I did not know in advance, I would recognize you as Claudia. I've seen you, of course, at the Gabbatha. But even your garments and manner of dress tell me you are not one of us. Later, you must bring me other garments. I dare not send for them now. Whatever mission you wish me to perform, I am ready. Is there some message? None at present. Are the soldiers still searching for me? Yes, everywhere. I fear they may come here. They'll not think to look for me here in Lazarus' home, for it's otherwise empty. And there's a secure hiding place above. They'll not think I'd seek shelter among Christians. Why did you come here? You are not a follower of the Crucified One. You did not even know him. No, but I knew that Jesus was a just man. I warned my husband I'd suffered many things in a dream because of him. And why did he condemn him? He promised he would not. He said he could find no crime in him. Twice he pledged me he would release him. But he did not. Because he was weak and he had the power of might. Caesar's might. When Jesus had been whipped and scourged and beaten, he too was weak. But he had the power of truth. His own. God now has given me the wisdom and courage to see the difference. Stephen, you know the things that Jesus taught. Teach me the truth that I may have light. But you were a Roman, the procurator's wife. Born free, not a subject like we Judeans are. It's the truth, Stephen, that sets men free. Is this not the teaching of Jesus? Yes. You will not return then to Pilate. No, Stephen. Some words of the Master's come to my mind with new enlightenment. Once I heard him say, he had not come to send peace upon earth, but to bring a sword, not peace. I remember he said, for I have come to set a man at variance with his father and a daughter with her mother, and a man's enemies will be those of his own household. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. I never thought this sword would cleave Pilate's very household. of manpower. One of us legionaries could guard this spot as well as an army. Right. I thought we'd have a crowd of sightseers. Certainly was a big crowd on the hill yesterday. Today's the Sabbath, Decius. How long have you been in Jerusalem not to know things were to stand still on the Sabbath? You're right about the crowd, though. Certainly big. Certainly was. The way they were yelling reminded me of the chariot races at the Flaminius at Rome. As if one of the chariots had suddenly overturned in the home stretch. Yeah, they do get excited over an execution, these people, don't they? What do you make of the way it ended? Strange, huh? Strange is not the word for it. Of course, I think it was a coincidence, that, that earthquake. People always think when one event follows another like that, that they're connected. Uh, not me. I am not superstitious. Cassius must be superstitious then. Talked with him about it during the watch last night. Claims it was nothing less than an act of God. Uh, I think the whole thing will be forgotten the way they forget the chariot races. One day it's terribly important. The next you can't remember the name of the winning driver or whether it was three or four horses he drove. All right. I wish Cassius would relent and let us ease up a bit. I feel lucky today. Like to throw you a few games of dice. Throw dice in the graveyard? <laughs> Not me. Oh, I thought you weren't superstitious. Here comes the centurion. When you leave your post for a while, I'd like to talk to you where your men can't hear us. Certainly. Gallicus, take over. Come. 
I didn't want to talk over there, but I want to go over plans with you. I understand. First, does your guard need to be reinforced? Pilot's worried. Wants your opinion. I see no need of that. The watch has been quiet. No trouble. Good. You'll be pleased to hear that. Every extra soldier is searching for Claudia, but he wants everyone at hand, lest there be an insurrection. Any signs of that? None that I can see. Only fear, wonderment, uncertainty. Most of the people are locked in their houses. Some went to the temple, but it's a ruin. So I hear. Pilot regrets the day he let this happen. But somehow I think great good will come of it. During the long hours of my watch, that has been my very thought. Well, any report for pilot? Tell him all's well. Matthew. Matthew. Our group is ready now to leave for the tomb. Oh. Unbothered door. I must have dozed since Thomas left and since the others went to Emmaus. Is it daybreak? Not yet, but we are ready. Peter, no. Does he approve of such an early start? I'll tell him then. Peter. Awaken, Peter. Peter, we are leaving now to go to the sepulchre. Only you women? Have you no escort? It is better this way. I am not afraid. No harm will come to us. We have a lantern. Had not one of us... Oh, no, Peter. You are too well known in the streets. That would only create a tension. You could not risk it. God speed you then. Let them go, Matthew. Insurrection? He is risen. He is risen. Jesus is risen. More idle nonsense. Have you lost your wits? Have you too deserted your post? The Nazarene has risen. Truth is for those who will hear it. You. Peter, the tomb is empty. What? The stone has been rolled back and the body is gone. They have taken him away and I know not where. Where are the others? In the garden. Where are you going? Back to the tomb. Come, John. We must see what has happened. He is risen, John. This is the veil that was wrapped around his sacred head. Yet I do not understand. He will enlighten us, Peter. Come, we must spread these good tidings quickly. Rejoice, Claudia, rejoice! He is risen! Christ is risen! Andrew, rejoice! He has risen as he promised. He has risen and I have seen him. The soldiers say the one they crucified is risen. He's risen! I've just heard the news. The crucified one has come forth from the grave. He is risen. Yes. Rejoice, centurion. Christ has risen. Holy Mother, Jesus, your son, has risen and appeared to me. And to me, Peter, my son. He has forgiven me. My doubt, my weakness, my betrayal, everything. Seeing his cross and knowing that he yet came back to us. Can you still not understand the depth of his love? But I denied him. He chose me leader, and three times I denied him. When he needed me, I ran from him. And yet his love pursued you and always will. This is why he came back. When you understand Golgotha, you will understand Bethlehem and the Eucharist. Jesus forgives much because he loves much that you may love him. Did he not tell you to forgive your brother seven times was not enough? Yes, nor 70 times seven, he said. I heard him then with my ears. 
I hear him now with my heart. Yes, Pete. Oh, great is my joy after these dark hours. He has given us a great victory. No longer do I despair. Again, I have faith. He has restored my hope. Rather speak in loving charity, Peter, my son. He has given his victory not to us alone, but to all men. For they are your brothers. Well, fellas, that's the story of Hill Number One. Wheeler, you asked what's the meaning of all this. Well, if you look on hill number 46, in the light of hill number one, hardship, suffering, self-sacrifice is never without meaning. Out of these things, many virtues are born. Courage, heroism, love. When good men everywhere so fervently want peace, war is a crucifixion. It shakes the earth, darkens the sun, and makes man search for faith and meaning and right. As you're doing by asking, what's it all about? And rights worth defending. But the first victory you achieve is always one of faith. You've got to have faith in God. I think Mary would tell you that. She told the apostles before the resurrection. And I think Mary would tell all of us to pray. To pray always. It's quite a story when you come to think about it. That's what I want you to do. Think about it. It's all right here in the rosary. Of course, the beads don't tell it to me. I tell it to the beads. That's what meditation is. That's what prayer is. Yeah, Mansfield. Say, we've taken that hill. Sure. It's Easter morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. Dear mother and father and child, may God help me now to bring home to you what the rosary can do to your family to enable you to fulfill well the last wish of our Redeemer, the last wish of your Redeemer. When he left the supper table to go out into the agony, just before he went into the garden to pay the price for the forgiveness of your sins and mine, he made a wish and a prayer. And that wish and prayer of our Lord was this, unity amongst his followers. Dear mother, dear father, dear son and daughter, in our Lord's holy name, in the name of your Redeemer who paid the price for your redemption and for the forgiveness of your sins, I ask you with all my heart to fulfill and give to him his last wish before he went into the garden for his agony for you. Unity. Unity in yourselves. Unity with him. Love for yourselves love for him. This, dear mother and father and child, you can do as sure as God is alive. If night after night for a lifetime, you gather to say the rosary together, to let the rosary teach you, to let the rosary inspire you, to let the rosary develop you. In our blessed mother's name, the queen of heaven and earth, I ask you, dear mother and father and child, to raise your voices with the millions of others, to say the family that prays together stays together. 